Greetings and welcome to Star Trek Discovery Pod, a sometimes funny, trying to be smart podcast covering all things new and classic Trek. Get me a seven of limes. I'm your captain, Mariah Gossett. With me on the view screen, we have... Clyde Haynes, a smuggler? Yeah, I can see it. And your ODing brain, boss it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I knew no one, no one was going to say that. No one was going to say that. I knew, I knew that was going to be an original. That is all you, Paul. Much like it, it is always all you, Paul. <laughs> uh, tonight we are discussing uh, Erenga, directed by John, John Dukowski, written by M. Raven Metzner. Uh, just a couple of pieces of housekeeping before we get into some hot thoughts, some spicy ponderings to be determined what the last of that <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to give like, it away all the it way. It sounds like, Mariah, you too have OD'd. <laughs> a yeah, full day I, of stimulants. A full day of stimulants straight into my veins. Um, Paul, how can people find ways to connect with us on the internet? Hey, maybe you guys want to subscribe to our podcast at Apple, Spotify, YouTube. All links are at StarTrekPod.co. And if you love our content, and I know you do, perhaps uh, consider becoming a Patreon person for just yeah. $2 per episode at Patreon.com slash StarTrekPod. A patron, if you will. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that, that, is that where it's from? Is patron on? Oh, yeah, being good. a patron for the arts. <laughs> There we go. I've heard some people say Patreon, but um, I think it's Patreon, patron, but that's just me. Yes. But um, Clyde, if people want to tell us their spicy thoughts, their interesting ponderings, their meandering musings, how should they contact us this evening during the live stream? Well, if it, you really have something that you want to say, especially if it's spicy, just head over to that Reddit after dark. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't go do there. Don't, oh, go, no, no, don't do that. That's don't a whole that. nother pod about other stuff. No. Um, if you want to interact with us live and you're on YouTube, then just type capital P, capital O, capital D, capital pod in the chat and we'll take a look. Your, your thought, your musing, your spicy nugget of information. And in a moment, we will ask you about your general thoughts of the show. So just type in capital H, capital F, capital HF into the chat. Um, and we'll take a look at your spicy informational nuggets. Yeah, we'll do it. Let's jump right on in. I think it's time. Let's go. For the record, uh, Fantastic Four, very underrated movie. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I saw it, but I don't remember it. So maybe exactly right. But Fantastic the hot Four. freak meme, fantastic. <laughs> the Fantastic Four was okay. I think Fantastic Four two, Rise of Silver Surfer, yeah, less less cohesive. Less cohesive. Um, let's get into some hot freaks. Uh, hot drinks. Clyde, what do you think of this episode? I loved it. Um, last week, I mentioned that it wasn't my favorite episode. This was really like, okay, now we're back in it. Um, you, you've got an altercation with the brain. You've got, uh, you know, trauma from past civilizations. You've got. Uh, Trina, who can I just say she is a straight up boss? Like I really like the way she handled herself this week. Serena is like, mm. I, was just I got. Like, she's she's amazing. Like, um, so you just you had a lot of stuff going on here, but I will say, and this is going to be definitely a hot freak. Um, I'm getting a little tired of books nonsense, so <laughs> it's it's wearing a little thin on me. Like. <laughs> Get it together, my man. Get it together. <laughs> uh, Paul, what's your hot break? Uh, I thought I had a really good time. Like, I think the thing that I've always had a problem with is I just don't believe the the love story between the two of them, hmm. or I don't like them. Or but she had tears. Like yeah. Oh tears. wow. You're, you're right. You're right. Right. Because 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 crying makes it all better. Like <laughs> like I I I I I really I like the fight sequence. I like the shot very interestingly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, uh, I want to talk about that. Uh, but, but in the end, like you know, I I basically watch it and I go like, okay, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that I don't necessarily like these two characters or where they fit. Other, if I can just like divorce that, I I'm fine. 
All right. I enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm uh, yum yum. Non is back. Uh, you know, I thought sh- it was a fun return. I'm still. I don't understand why we don't have our normal bridge crew. I I don't care about them bringing the Enterprise back. I just want them back. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I want to dive into the fight choreography and the way that particular scene was shot um, with y'all in just a bit. But overall, I enjoyed this episode. It reminded me a lot of Deep Space Nine. I was like, I'm I'm ready for Disco Deep Space Nine. So give it to me. Um, yeah, we shall we shall see how it all wraps yeah. out. But that's my my top line hot freak. I liked it. There's things I liked. There's things I found interesting. Um, and uh, I think it is a strong first episode into our like true back half of the season and kind of the forward momentum push. Mm -hmm. So how many episodes in the season? Is it 10? Yeah. There's only three three more. more? Yeah. It's short. So, okay. Yeah. Mariah, I will say like you, when she started asking, can you set a course? And I'm looking at these new bridge crew. I'm I'm just looking at them going, not Detmer, not Owo. Yeah. And I'm a little not happy about it. Like, I yeah, I, I'm like, I mean, good for them if they've been like booked and busy and they just weren't available. Like, I get that happens a lot with the uh, with shows, but I feel like it happens less often with these like way more seasonal shows than it does with like, you know, more of the always on model. But um, we do have a message from the menagerie from our patrons. Uh, Kian says, I'm feeling a lot better about the rest of the season than I did after the last episode. I love the politics of the 32nd century and now a race against the brain in the final three episodes. I really want to think that Jet was smuggling books for Pelia. Um, Pelia, uh, which I'm also very excited about. But um, I wanted to kind of like dive in. I was doing some research about how many parallels there are and like connections to Deep Space Nine that this season's really cemented. Um, And kind of starting with Culber's uh, research into the Breen and the Dominion War, because to me, there's a bit of a dissonance between Culber being like, they don't have much more information, but then Rainer gives this like pretty compelling backstory of how his planet was co- like essentially run by the Breen as like a, a hostile colony. And so I wanted to see what y'all think about the fact that we've jumped 900 years and somehow we still have just as much information as we had when we left the Dominion War. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think like, you know, if you're an advanced society and and you don't want to, and you're xenophobic, I think that's what happens, right? Like mm-hmm. if the Federation goes and mm-hmm. goes, oh, well, you have to talk to us now. We're extroverts. <laughs> yeah. And then I guess with the collapse of the Federation as well, it limits yeah, their resources. It, 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 but... well, it, yeah. And all, you know, and all the lithium got turned off for a century or so. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, it, I, I think it's, I think I find it fine that they don't know anymore. I do f- like, like I said before, uh, my biggest issue with the Breen, the way they're rendered, is that they had really cool ships in Deep Space Nine that were crazy. And although the Dreadnought was crazy big, mm-hmm. it just looked like a big gun. And like I, I could see, I could see that as opposed to the departure from in Deep Space Nine, where you go like, is that a ship or is that just a bunch of junk that just kind of got mm-hmm. smashed together? So anyway, so I, as far as like them not knowing anything about the brain, I, I, I do get it. Like, you know, I, I can see that, you know, uh, like m- my favorite, you know, part when that, like never turn your back on a brain. That was like mm-hmm. said in deep space nine. Yes. And, uh, and I go, go Romulans. <laughs> and the tree that goes like no need to be racist <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean I, i'm i, I kind of i accepted it like did did something on the back of my neck stand up a little bit yeah and i just kind of said I, I accept it like you don't know anything i i assume much like paul said that between the lack of the lithium mm-hmm. due to the burn due to their being xenophobic and ultimately a more powerful race they mm-hmm. really it's not like you're really trying to go look for them right like you're really especially if you're resource strapped so i kind of felt like all right they're secretive this is not the first secret like right. race that we have we're dealing with the gorn on strange new worlds right so likewise we don't know much about them so 
yeah, I kind of said I'll I'll accept it. I won't push too far on that. Mariah, how did you feel about it? I mean, it, at first it rubbed me a little bit, but then I, I felt better after Rainer's explanation because to me it did kind of set it up as like, oh, we've never had any diplomatic exchanges with this particular group of people, um, which then would not really allow for the sharing of scientific information. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it, at first I was just like, come on. And then I was like, well, OK, <laughs> and that was kind of my arc <laughs> of feelings about it, this particular episode. Um and I think it'll be, it, it, yeah, I'm just always like interested in how, um, and it might just be because we live in like a society where it's deemed accept acceptable to have like human remains at like museums and things like that. It's just like one of those things where we study archaeology, we study like uh, human history in this like very particular way. And so I'm just like, oh, is a brain never died like on another planet and we've like examined their body or their but again i'm overthinking <laughs> it's like like they have no blood they have no blood they wear cooling suits they are somehow both solid and a liquid and a yeah. gas <laughs> and, and you know like uh like one of my favorite lines in deep space nine is like way goes like oh you know you think you know with them in their refrigeration suits that uh their plan would be cold and inhospitable and, it go, and, it, and Damar goes, it's not. And it goes, no, it's actually quite lovely. <laughs> just, another, <laughs> just another mystery about the brain. Just another mystery about the brain. They're staying mysterious. Um, it, Kim brings up another point. At least we know more about relations with the brains in the 32nd century than we do about the Klingons. It is wild that we started with the Klingon war and we still have not gotten an update with them at all <laughs> um, <laughs> going into the final season. But well, I, I imagine like, you know, ima imagine what would happen to the Klingons. Here's this warrior race. And all of a sudden, uh, there's no there's war no to be had. There's no, mm -hmm. yeah, there's no dilithium. And so I'm what sure would you... they're doing a great job of, of, of fighting with each other. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Potentially. Um, so the last time we've seen the Breen attack Starfleet headquarters in history was in the changing face of evil from deep space nine. Um, it's when they nearly destroy all of San Francisco. So I thought that was like an interesting nod to Tilly being like, Oh, I have to get to Starfleet headquarters because like, this is what happened sort of the last time. I thought that was a, a nice little tip there um, to like how she's viewing her role at the Academy. And then we do find out that the, um, Next clue is entitled Labyrinths of the Mind, which as soon as it said it, I'm just like, I guess because I just uh, associate David Bowie with all sure, space sure. travel. I was just like, uh, I just went to the movie Labyrinth and I was like, do we, th <laughs> in we my Muppet? wild world, in my wild world, the next episode is a full puppet sing-along episode. <laughs> there you go. There's Mariah, everyone. <laughs> you know, because it reminds me of a babe, babe. No, I got it. I got it. Yes. The power of voodoo. Yes. Voodoo. Oh. You do. Anyway. I'm, you're not going to get me singing Labyrinth <laughs> songs on the pod tonight. Aw, I may boo. be, but I'm not that loopy. But I do love that movie. Um, it would have been cool. I feel like it, I can't. I tried to look it up, and David Bowie never guessed it on Star Trek, and that feels like such a, a lost moment to time. That would have been epic, um, in my mind at least. Uh, I digress. Bye, uh -oh. Clyde. Bye, Clyde. Okay, BRB. He'll be right back. Uh, got it. Okay, Clyde has to make a visit to uh, the the Red's bar to pull something out of the oven. Uh, which brings me to the clue was written by Doctor Marina Dear uh, Deertex, which is obviously some sort of a reference. I'm assuming to Marina Desertus. <laughs> <laughs> sure, close enough. You know, close enough. Um. And what's interesting is they have said that the book was written in 2371. Do you know what else happened in 2371, Paul? I don't, Mariah. What happened? It is the same year the USS Voyager left Deep Space Nine for the Badlands. And guess oh, where we're go going next episode? Oh, I guess we're going to the, the Badlands? We are going to the Badlands. <laughs> Yeah. Is Discovery going to jump into a wormhole? <laughs> like it's it's funny because if it does, it doesn't matter because Discovery could just jump back. That's true. I guess they could. They could yeah. just jump back. 
Um, yeah, 2371 was a busy year in Star Trek history. It's also the year that Thomas Riker stole the USS Defiant from oh. Deep Space Nine. Uh, it's also the year the USS Enterprise D crash landed the saucer on Davidian 3 in Star Trek Generations, uh, which means it's also the same year that time displaced Captain Kirk was killed. Big year. <laughs> Big year. It's a lot. Big, That's a Big, lot. It's a lot. 2371. It's a lot for, for that book to have been written there. Um, it's also the Badlands is also close to Cardassian space. So I'm wondering if we get a full Dominion War regrouping and we get to see some Cardassian this next mm. episode. What would oh, be yeah. your, your thoughts on that? I don't think the Dominion are like even a factor nowadays, right? Would they but be? what if they just decide like, hey, let's like just like re I mean, we love a reboot. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, but then we like. Do. They'd have to go through the wormhole, assuming that it's still there. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, like if they did bring it back, like I would like to see where Odo is, uh, because Odo is, you know, would still be alive theoretically. Uh, and although the actor is not, yes, yeah. <laughs> Renee, so, yeah, yep. so. that would be pretty wild if it's like they cast someone to. What if it, like they just get Doug Jones to play old Odo and that's why we haven't seen him as Saru for the entire season. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, th the coolest thing is if we got a, um, a Cisco like cameo somehow, um, that would be kind of cool, but yeah, like a hollow I, or something. Yeah. But I, I, you know, you mentioned Doug Jones and we just talked about Detmer and, and oh, well, mm -hmm. the final season of discovery this is why to me it's obvious they did not know this was going to be the final season because i feel yeah. like you don't do this to your cast if it's your final season or you just do it to your cast and you're like oh it's our final season we're not we're not we don't have enough money so let's just like cancel everyone's contract that we don't we have it, we don't have to it does feel I, can, I feel like i can feel some budget restraint in this season yeah. but but i do feel like they are i mean they're going all out to set up this academy spinoff i mean tilly talks about the academy like every week mm. yeah. yeah that is true um I, what did you oh go ahead paul i was gonna say like one of the people who's still on there is reese right reese is still around yeah and what's really funny is like i was watching episodes of d space nine and there was the episode where what's his name uh he, anyway he's he, he betrays cisco but like his second in command is an asian guy named reese Hmm. and so i go like oh is that your like nephew <laughs> or, <laughs> great 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 <laughs> grandson. There, are, there are, i don't know a lot of asian guys named reese well it would be interesting because technically reese came it's before first, yeah, and yeah. then <laughs> it's like yeah that's and, and so they used it again like like they, they recycled uh, a name uh, that, that that's kind of weird for because like, you know, it's just very what's the word i want to use it's noticeable yeah you know yeah that's interesting um, I do really enjoy Tilly, um, Adira and Reno. I think that was like, I, I kind of, yeah. in all of the promo images for this episode, in my mind, this is going to be a way heavier, like those three solving a puzzle episode. And that got me very excited. And, um, I think set the expectation too high in my brain for it to just be kind of our, our B plot of the episode but i really enjoyed the little walk around ship and getting to know reno in a very right. fun way what did you all think of um reno's resume if you will i mean again to say what we just said it kind of sort of sucks and the way the reason why i say it sucks is because it's amazing mm. like reno is clearly one of the more interesting characters on the entire ship Right. And so what they've done is they've just given us this this thread to pull and you're like, OK, so now you're that character who has this incredible background that, you know, all this stuff like that's fantastic. And there are three episodes left. I know. I hope Reno gets to be something in the Academy because I, I was really hoping this is going to be a Tilly Reno Adira go off the ship to like find a clue as mm -hmm. that was getting set up. And then when it did not happen, I was very sad. <laughs> what about Adira going to Academy? Like when I was looking at them, I was like, I wonder. Yeah. I, that, I mean, I, I think it would make sense that maybe they, they had that way, but um, to recap all of Reno's incredible jobs, it includes a VP shuttle pilot, a deep mercury welder, a bartender on Ashlon four, a smuggler moving hard to find 
uh, folios for a shady uh, Antiquarian archivist. That's a really hard thing to say. Um, and then, yeah, padded their resume a bit as a rare in, uh, Antiquarian bookseller. Pretty fun. Yeah, no, she's good. Like, you know, and then like, was going to go pick up a bar shift at Red's. Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 she based yeah, go ahead, based Paul. on the Paul Satachit of like, you know. Of, yeah, of, it's, it's, it's funny. still like the Paul Satachit of the season. I, yeah. I was going to say she's kind of a Han Solo of Discovery, but Paul For Satachit's sure. another way to go. Same well, you know, like, <laughs> they, they, they're, 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 it's all the same. It's all the same. Mm-hmm. Um, So you both kind of mentioned like the, the lock and mall of it all. We do get a quick mm-hmm. Like they've been captured, Book tries to get in, but doesn't, which I think is for the best because Book, to your point, uh, has been messing around a little too much. Um, And they sort of hatch like a very half thought out plan to try to break out of discovery. Um, But what did you think of how, I think we all knew eventually one of them had to die. What did you think of this kind of culmination of their relationship? I didn't at this point, like it's, it's just like, really like they're at this point where Burnham has basically gotten, you know, partially their freedom, right? Like Mm -hmm. they're not being chased by the brain anymore. She's hatched this incredible idea to give them some breathing roll. And in that moment, he accidentally kills himself. Like that just Mm -hmm. sucks. But he didn't know that. He didn't know that. But it's one of those things where they keep saying, just give us a chance. Give us a chance. Just stay here. And because of the trauma that they've had and, and the, their past experiences, they just can't trust anyone except each other. So it's unfortunate. Like, I kind of wanted to see what happened. This is an interesting way to go. It's definitely, if you only got three more episodes, this is a, this is going to move the plot along significantly faster. Um, but overall, it, I, I thought it was good and interesting. And I'm fascinated to see what happens next. Um, and then the fight scene was amazing. Yeah, let's talk about that that fight scene. I I maybe in a controversial take, I did I don't think I liked the way it was shot. That that's that's, that's a valid way to, to say it. Speak speak more. Uh, say say more on that. Like it what, what did like, you like about? Do, y- do y'all remember that movie? Um, uh, like it reminded me of like Snatch or like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. Like it, it's a very particular way to shoot a fight. And I didn't think it worked with the way the fight was choreographed. I think when you shoot something with those bit, those like pull out moments, you want it to be on like a like a, a moment of impact, a punch. But most like TV fight sequences aren't shot for that. They're shot for like it's like a dance. And so I felt like the camera was breaking the momentum that was set up in the dance of the fights. Does that make sense? Sounds like to me that you don't support women i mean that (laughs) my problem was i love when it's like women kicking ass that's my favorite genre of movie and like i just think back to like the way fight sequences were shot when like michelle yo was on set Mm -hmm. and like how fluid that usually always felt Uh, and the way the camera would follow those motions and this felt like i was it just felt so choppy glitchy choppy yeah yeah i know what you're saying uh, like for for me, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, you guys remember a TV show called Smallville? Yes. yes. Okay, so Smallville had this really interesting thing after season five, where after season five they realized, oh, we're on Fridays, and the internet is not really that much of a thing quite yet, and people are gonna watch this regardless because they have nowhere to go. The P- our, our 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 demographic has nothing to do other than to watch Smallville on Friday, so so in it, in that way, like they deviated from what typically is uh, a a formula for a TV show where you go here is the style and here is the blah blah blah. Somewhere around season five, they go well, let's make um let's make it like Saw, and so they just shoot it like Saw, and then they go oh let's let's shoot it like you know. Pulp Fiction. They shoot mm-hmm. like like you know they because it didn't matter 
Because people know, are going to watch it anyway. Exactly. They, they knew they were locked in. So they just kept on writing whatever they wanted and whatever style they wanted. Because, in fact, this the, you could say that they were trying to be more current because like, oh, this is popular mm-hmm. now. Let's just copy it. Um, and so I felt like in this particular uh, episode, the fight sequence was was done uh, in some ways like this would work very well with a horror movie. Like, you know, like uh, yeah. where then, like the monster is attacking you and stuff like that. And they, they right. go like, oh, well, well, we'll do this. This is our last season. What does it matter? Yeah, I think. And it, it's interesting to me because the, um, the director comes from editing. And, uh-huh. and so I usually really love directors who, who come from editing because I think they do a really good job of having like um, concise like they tell the most amount of story in the scene as possible. And I, I usually really enjoy that about directors who come from editing. And, and it, I think to me, the biggest issue I had with it was that whole sequence felt so disconnected from the rest of the, like nothing else about the episode mm-hmm. paralleled that style choice. And like, I enjoy when people take big swings. I just thought this was a big swing and it didn't quite like hit for me personally yeah. but. but but imagine if you're like an editor given that your chance to direct an episode he's and, directed other episodes well then this line of thinking is not going to work <laughs> <laughs> i you know i think i think for me there there were a couple things that just was a little bit off for me one is i didn't quite feel choppy when i watched it but what i did notice was there was there was a lack of continuity. Like when sure. Colbert is shot, we don't see him again until he's standing up trying to right. save. Like, like I'm not lot. following the story of the fight. He right. fell into the, the Arctic mist. Right, but what what happens to him? I think I, what I was expecting is like some type of trail off shot to see him laying on the ground or moving or something like oh, something like he, to, to to tell us. Well, like he he was dead, and then he went back to the mycelial network, <laughs> and like he got resurrected again. And this time he was cool about it because like well, I've but, done this already. But that's the thing, though, Paul. Like my first thought was, is he dead? And so because yeah. you've killed him before, right? Like you almost want to let your audience know he's not dead by showing him again moving or struggling or something. I, and I see that. And the other thing for me was. I thought it was an interesting choice. You bring Nan back onto the ship as the big bag security person, and immediately she gets her butt kicked. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say that. Like you know, like this is why I don't like these two characters. I, think I was e- I was expecting her to like cold cock maul right in the nose and drop her or to yeah to like have a bigger victory moment before maybe mm-hmm. getting like you know like sure, a, a fake like out trick. or something you know mm-hmm. yeah something that felt a little more clever in yeah, the I, don't know. I, yeah. I, I i i don't like when stupid people succeed i feel like maul and lock <laughs> really stupid. don't like these two i don't i don't like you know what is what do you like about them as far as like as like people like you know or like I mean, I think that they are compelling in the way that they both have sympathetic backstories of not belonging or growing up without uh, resources and kind of found each other through that. Let's be clear. You're talking about the scion of the Breen Imperium not having resources. (laughs) Well, he he's like not good at what he does. You know, he's like the ugly duckling. Of the of so, the brain. So the ugly prince. <laughs> yeah, the ugly prince and the and the popper popper, popper mm-hmm. princess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like you're, I just I don't know, I just think they you're behave. hurting this, Paul. Like you're 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 trying to you're just tearing down this thing for me. No, I, I'm just saying like this is this is my my problem with this episode because like in in essence it's supposed to be the heart of the episode is supposed to be like oh here's this tragic moment between these characters that we hopefully you know liked despite the fact they are anti-heroes but right. like they're just so it's just so whiny in a way that uh i, I hear what you're saying actually mm-hmm. like i look i'm i like a rom-com I that's like not true to be that is not true i have a <laughs> lot of young i have friends who are gen xers <laughs> <laughs> so i look i like a good rom-com and so i want to root for them yeah but I think I've said this from the very beginning. What they haven't done is they just haven't given us enough 
character development to really draw us into these characters. Like they've given us a little bit. So you have this whole episode mm-hmm. where I guess we were supposed to fall in love with with Maul and Locke. And I think part of what's blocking me from really like taking stock is that the one character that we're tied to, Book, she keeps rejecting, right? Yeah. So I think if they had made that relationship a little bit different and and more like, oh, you are kind of like the big brother I always wanted but never had, then her tragedy and her hurt probably would hit a little harder, right? But what they've done is they've completely isolated her. So she's now just a villain. And you're trying to get me to care about a villain. Yeah, I think I would have liked if seeing and I know why we didn't for like budget reasons because it would have been building another set but it would have been like if I had seen the moment that she decided to put out the SOS because to me that is like she sure. ran out of out of options yeah, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. like a big uh feels yeah, like yeah. a big emotional choice there um but I thought the reveal that they had kind of like eloped was interesting mm-hmm. um and obviously not supported by the brain um I wanted to ask y'all, do you, so like they definitely didn't talk to that other Breen royal family, right? Like that was totally a bluff. That's totally BS. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But I thought it was smart. I thought it was a smart choice. No, I I thought so too. I'm also just like, do these other Breens not have any way to be like, can someone call up this other family? Like, is anyone like a secret spy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't want to really call them up because the last thing you want you're to do is to, to get them involved. Show your and, hand. Yeah. And, and especially, yeah, you don't want them to know what you're doing. You don't want them to know that you know what they're doing. And you don't mm-hmm. want them to come in and then really get a bidding war. That's so, so it's kind of like, well, mm-hmm. I'm just going to stop, step back. But I don't know. yeah. Oh, There's, you know what I just thought of? The way we would have all probably been rooting more for Maul and Locke if we had a short trek. That was just one of their little adventures sure. that showed their love for each other. Yeah, no. I, well, you, like, I, I would say more than than that. We needed to see the the true, I guess, the development of their their relationship. What we got was like she's showing up, and it was like one day she's doesn't like him, and then the next day she does. Like, well, I think that was supposed it, to be a longer passage of time. Yeah, it, it didn't connect. Like it, it, it didn't really get. Like I needed, I don't know, a Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan montage, right, mm-hmm. um, or something where they're you know picking groceries and going to dinner and you know having a true meet cute, something that shows me the evolution of them actually falling in love like that. And I didn't get that. So, like I, I'm rooting for them to figure it out. But I didn't feel myself emotionally attached. Like when he died, I was kind of like, mm, kind of didn't want him to die, but okay. Like when he died, I was like, yeah, what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> you know, like, like, uh, no it's sympathy. A, it, it's such a bad plan. Like, oh, well, here's what you do run out and find a shuttlecraft. You are in the year 3000. What it was uh, a uh, bad th- plan. <laughs> th- what's what do you think is going to happen? This is not a good plan. Like it would be much better if they just tried to escape from a brig, like you know, later. But like mm. while while he while he's hooked up to the, to the like you know to the IV and then goes, oh, give me one. I so. think it is that like moment of when you are that desperate, though. That is when stupidity comes in, right? It's like you're not making good choices when you think everything is on the line like that. Yeah, Maybe. his 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 plan was I'm gonna partially OD. They're going to come in. You're going to leave. You're going to get to a shuttle. And you're going to come. How How am I in my partially od state? How are you going to get me out of this? So like he's, She's going to beam his partially od ass into the shuttlecraft. Or they're going to fly <laughs> off. And, like I, I don't know. I it's don't a know. bad plan. But they're but, young. But, and but I love. will say this. And I, I will happens, say this. Right? It, is, it is absolutely consistent within their characters. Because they're reckless. Right. They're really yes. reckless. And so I, I really get that. I really get their reckless, but like, you know, but they need to be like really good too. And I don't see them being really good. You see it in the beginning when they go, Oh, mm-hmm. well, my plan got messed up. I'm going to like, I'm going to like cause a landslide and like force you guys to deal with that. I go totally cool. Totally cool. Like, you know, like that, you know, like, is that villainous? Sure. 
but like I, I can see how someone could come up with that. But like throughout the other episodes, all they've done is really go like we can't we don't know anything about Romulan uh Romulan uh Poetry. haikus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and then and then we buy a space bug, a time bug. And you, you know, like and and then we, then our ship gets screwed up and we get trapped into like this this pocket universe. And I, I don't know. I'm just anyway. <laughs> It's not my favorite. Not a not a fan of Mall and Lock. Um, yeah. Well, then outside of Mall and Lock, how do we feel about uh, now the setup? Essentially, that you know, Discovery has to outrace the Breen to all of these final clues. And do we think that's actually a fair? Like, do we think Mall knows anything of use at this point? Because it feels like we're so many clues ahead of them. Well, like Discovery has all four pieces and they need the yeah. fifth piece mm-hmm. and then they're going to jump. Like what I don't understand is how the Breen are going to track them. Right. They said something about tracking their jump signature. But but what does that mean? Like, you know, In the same uh, way like, you track a warp signature. Mm-hmm. Oh, they were here. I, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I didn't know you could do that with spore drive, but yeah. Okay. yeah but like, you know, it's 800 years, but like, so what if they like jump to like the far side of the galaxy? And then you jump know, back, <laughs> and then have the brain like you know take a, take their time there, and then mm-hmm. or jump all around like you know like what, what? yeah. I know Maul had the book, but now Maul does not have the book. P. Lewis brings up, yeah. and so mm-hmm. I I wonder how much fit she was because it was she able to translate it? You know, like those are all like questions that we have left to ponder of how useful is Maul going to be to the brain, and then also is the brain going to trust anything she says? And then like is she? I get this isn't a, a, a question for y'all it, for mall. Is there really anything that's going to work out for her? Because like, even if she has some semblance of clues, does she really think the Breen are going to just like not kill her at the end once they have all the pieces? Like, what that's my question. What if she's pregnant? I saw someone mention that in the mm-hmm. chat. That is very interesting. Cause then would that be the rightful heir to the throne? would be i mean it's 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 one of those things we see it all the time right yeah. it's like in in history with interracial relationships it's like well i'll never accept you but then the kid comes along it's like well i'm still probably not really gonna accept you but because this is the kid i'll accept the kid or not but i'll accept the kid and i will tolerate you so i'm not gonna kill you but i'll tolerate you like that could happen yeah, it is I'm interesting a- that, you know, they did scans when they got on board, though, and and Colbert was like, oh, yeah, she's like a little starved and dehydrated, but overall, she's fine. But not mm. pregnant. Yeah. But but to be, to be fair, like, she has that cloaking technology in her, in her body. She's just, like, cloaking the uteri. Like, I actually think it's going to be a happy ending. I think, I think mm-hmm. like, you know, like, j- Jellyface or Jellyman, I, I don't know, like, Locke is going to come back from the dead. Discovery is going to drop them in some colony in, in the Gamma yeah. Quadrant and happily with ever book. after. Uh, with book. And drop uh, him with book. So he'll yeah, finally, you know, stop tripping. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that is interesting is they've definitely been leaning hard on this idea that this technology could potentially raise the dead. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like they've set up the motivation for Maul is like she wants to go find this to be able mm-hmm. to revive her now dead lover. Like I would um, be, it would be really neat if like they they use it to you know remake Quijon. Oh, I'm just saying, like, I'm just nice. saying, like you know, if, if it's such super technology, I don't. I mean, the what is call that? It? What's going to finally motivate? Is that going to be the ultimate motivator for book that d- d- essentially like Maybe. ruins his relationship? I don't like, know. Like, it, it, it's well within the realm of reason, right? Like I mean, yeah. like like Quijon, like you know the 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 planet mass is still there as for yeah. as from you know so like you know we can just i don't know what this just this genesis is. project that shit <laughs> yeah i i don't know i don't know like but it would really solve books problems right mm-hmm. yeah. like you know so no longer just one weird sort of quasi family member left in the universe yeah i mean like like it, it's all it's all good like it, it's all doable right it's just yeah. a matter of like can we get there satisfactorily yeah speaking of book um i do like him and stamets working on stuff together again i was like really down for my nerds solving puzzles this episode mm-hmm. <laughs> and, Same. I'm, I'm with you 100 um, 
Yeah, like those were all really fun scenes to me. I also enjoyed the like some of the moments of humor on like the bridge with uh with Burnham and some of the rest of the anyway. I, I feel like we're starting to get back into the the groove of my like crew chemistry as I like to call sure. it. But like yeah. my hot paw mm -hmm. is like I feel oh, like Oh wait, do you need your video? Do you please, want yours? Please, 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 Here we you. go. Hot paw. Hot Time for a hot Paul. <laughs> I need you to send me an audio recording of you just going hot Paul. <laughs> hot Paul. Like, I feel that like they tried to make this season more fun and light and, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. all for it. I'm all for it. I will say that a lot of what I feel the character development that has happened over the last four years has kind of been thrown out the window and some perhaps some for the better perhaps some for the worse like like for example like burnham is no longer brooding and i think that's good for mm -hmm. the most part but stamets feels very two-dimensional right now mm -hmm. like like i i don't like you know when you say i see him with like you know book and i go like you know i feel that there isn't a lot of nuance here you just gotta solve this. We gotta solve this. And I'm like, yeah, uh, I feel like they're they're leaning in heavy with him having to figure out what his new legacy is post the mm -hmm. spore drive. And it seems to be really leaning on being able to solve these clues and complete the the mission. But I do, do wish we were getting some of those, like to your point, Paul, some emotional beats from him about yeah. how he's processing legacy as a yeah, like, as an idea. Totally. Like uh, and it might be it might be shot and it's just on the, the cutting room floor yeah. or it could just be, I don't know. Like I, I feel like there isn't a lot of time with Paul that I feel is meaningful for the character. It's there's always time for him for the plot, mm -hmm. but like, but I don't feel like it's revealing. There's a lot, there's, there's a lot of Culver like in, in, in the mm -hmm. season, right? There's a lot of him, but for all of it, like, you know, I, I don't know if it was, necessary i don't see exactly what they're trying to do with colbert quite yet mm -hmm. and maybe it'll wrap up in the the three episode uh three more episodes I, I don't know but like it's just interesting like i'm having a lot of fun watching this yeah but like but i i do feel that like i really want to see saru and tarina uh, that, that, mm -hmm. that, that that's that's the relationship i want to see the most right now i go like for real i'm with you on that paul oh, 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 where are they like you know uh, yeah, I would have liked even just like a little like hollow message, like, mm -hmm. "Oh, we both, uh, you know, diplomated our day." <laughs> yeah, no, like it, it, I think I think you know Vance is fine, you know, but mm -hmm. and and for all of it, what's his uh, Burnham? Uh, Burnham is doing great, and Rainer is kind of one dimensional, but like you know, you give him time, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, they, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of close ups of his hands. <laughs> Sure, hands. That's right. Uh, hand wringing. Yeah, I mean, I'm like I said earlier. I'm a little, I'd say, a, a little annoyed by Book trying to destroy all his credibility and relationship with Burnham each and every episode because he's so fixated on something that's not I mean, very. There's growth. It used to be much more. Trigger happy, I will say with book. Like yes. he would have been like breaking Maul out of that seal before she was, you know, zapped over to the Breen last season. So there's been growth. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like book has a very kind of low EQ. Like he, like he, like I feel like he's very well, emotional. For an empath. <laughs> yeah, exactly, which is weird. Like, like he's very emotional and he goes with his emotions. But like you know, but part of being like emotionally intelligent is kind of like knowing how to at least maybe not repress your emotion, but at least kind of like come to a, a good he working. He has a lot of feelings, Paul. I know, yeah, I, I, which, is, which is weird because I don't, I'm, I must not be able to relate to that because I, I must have a deficiency in feelings. I'm just, I, I think I'm used to Star Trek really putting this emphasis on the greater good. And in this situation, Maul said, I want to go with you. Take me with you, right? And in that, the ultimate, if you choose not to, then what happens is, like, 
hundreds, possibly thousands or more people are going to die because book felt like we can't give her over. Like it. It's like, uh, hey, man, like we're going to find a way to save her, too. You know how this goes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, to be fair, to be fair, like, you know, uh, and I'm not one to often defend book, but like book could just say, look, dude, like if we don't give her over, if, if we give her over, she's going to tell them about, you know, the pr- progenitor device or device, whatever. And you don't want the whole Breen Empire following all our asses to try to find this superpower. Right. Right. And, and and as much as like having a hundred people, a thousand people die right now, it's it's piddly wings compared to like the destruction of the Federation, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean so like like I actually agree with Book, you know, in, in this yeah. way. But I think they made a good point of being like, but we, she doesn't know where the next steps are, where the next clues are, but and the so while don't they are... know that there's there's a progenitor device out there. The Breen don't know that. Yeah, but the minute that ship showed up and Burnham's like, look, this is a ship from the future that we saw. What that told me was, well, you haven't done enough to stop that from happening yet. So you got to keep you got to keep hustling. Mm -hmm. And I I think they're going to like it's not about them not knowing about it. They're going to find out about it. It's about you getting it first. That's what this is about. But if you have her, it it could be both. Not if you're dead. Not if you're dead. That, that, that is fair. Like, you know, so like, like I'm not. That was a I'm big not, ship. That was a I'm, very big ship. I am just saying that, like, you know, I understand book's perspective. It, you, you, mean, can make, you can make a, you can make an argument. I'm not saying I agree if, with him because I have a high EQ. What about it? I, I can <laughs> empathize with people who, you know, are not exactly, except for like Maul and Locke, apparently. So maybe apparently. my ego is pretty low. Uh, crazy Mariah theory time. Uh-oh. Um, you need a video, a crazy right here time. I do sure need we a, have, a We had intro. a banner for a while. We used to have a banner. Yeah. What if who they beamed over is not actually Maul? Like, How? like what if they just like had non, you know, put on a disguise and and get beamed over and is like, JK, I don't know anything. I I I will buy you three drinks if that were the case. <laughs> Three drinks. <laughs> it is a wild theory. It's that's probably right. not true, but it would be fun. <laughs> but that, that's why I feel safe about the three Your, drinks. The three drinks. Like uh, so seven expensive. of limes. Seven of limes. I, I need seven seven of limes. That's right. Yeah. Forty nine of limes. <laughs> I, I was gonna put up our banner, but the banner's Mariah's prediction and not Mariah's theory. And I don't mm. quite think that you're predicting that. No, as not much a prediction quite, quite yet. There. Yeah. 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 No, not quite yet. Um, was there? I'm trying to think of anything else I really wanted to dig into. I mean, I'm excited to see if Deep Space Nine, like the station, still exists on this next one, this next episode. Oh. Um, I'm interested to use the library card in space. That's um, very. I'm I'm interested to see a space library. See, P. Lewis agrees with me. We did not see none at the end. <laughs> Well, um, you know what? Um, you, you know you're no. like, you know, <laughs> P. Lewis. If if it is not, I too will get you three drinks. <laughs> Look here. In fact, anyone on here right now, if if it, you know who say like you think during the live, I was going to say Paul. The, we the usually live, end up with a few hundred people who watch this, not during the live stream. During the live so. right now, <laughs> yes. if you think that like you know that, uh, write your name in the comments. And I will get you three drinks if it is non, in like in like in like Scarlet in Black Widow face. <laughs> Look here, Parker Lewis can't lose. Um, I'm not buying that at all. I'm just not in. I'm with Paul. As a matter of fact, it's good because because you're going to help me pay for the three drinks for everyone. <laughs> absolutely. Now, and I'm looking. That's twelve. I mean, we can go back and see who was in the live stream. So yeah. I'm. Just, I'm I will I will gladly help you with that one, Paul. If it turns out that Nan is in some type of costume makeup. Sure, sure. It like year three thousand makeup. Love it. Love it. <laughs> it's possible. I mean, we've seen Star Trek characters transform into many other people and races yeah, before. They're, they're called changelings. All the time. Listen. That's what I'd they be need. Really they need disappointed. a changeling uh security uh, guard. Uh, exactly. They need they need a like deep space night. 
<laughs> you didn't see that? You didn't see that coming, Paul? I saw it. Like, I just put my head down because I saw exactly where we were going. Uh, uh, my final question of the night is, is Discovery Modern Trek Deep Space Nine? Is Well, he, here's something that's is very interesting that I, I didn't realize watching... Uh, Which shout to uh, just to cite my sources, uh, Den of Geek for the great breakdown on the year twenty three seventy one, where a lot of my Deep Space Nine theories have come mm-hmm. from for this episode. I, I, I'll jump in here, Paul, for a quick second to say, I think that th- there's some elements in this season that they're they're giving some homage to Deep mm-hmm. Space Nine. I don't know if it's modern Deep Space Nine. But if you think you have more seasons to come, you're like, oh, well, we can we can spend some time just hanging you know, out and or, referencing Deep Space Nine. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Like for me, like I was, like I, I've been trying to avoid work this last week, so I've been watching a lot of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't I can't deal with it. Like, I, I, I'm, that's that's my go to. And I was like, oh, you know, like Deep Space Nine was a lot more woke than I re- realized. Like. Mm-hmm. I like, think it's the one that holds up the best to modern oh, 100%, standards. 100%. Like, but, you know, like, like, like it comes down from a diversity standpoint. Like, like where, where does, where does the white guy come in? Like it, it, at the chain of command, he's the mechanic. Like it's, it, it's such a, and diversity. he's a union man. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it you know, it, and, and Voyager does pretty much the same, like, you know, so it, it's a very interesting, like, uh, and I never noticed this. I never like it's so invisible to me at the time. It, it, it was mm-hmm. just like, oh well, here, here are space people. They're they're doing great. Uh, <laughs> here but, are space people. They're doing great. That should be our new catchphrase. <laughs> I mean, I I want that on a mug. Yeah, here are uh, space people. They're doing. We can get great. that on a mug. Oh, for you. A mug. We, I was like, I can add it to our merch <laughs> shop. Uh, that's right. But like, I was going like, oh yeah, here. I guess I guess in the nineties, it's pretty like you know, pretty progressive. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I didn't realize how how invisible it was to me. It's 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 a nice thing to realize later, right? That, that, that you know that that the the the. It's why they won a Peabody. Did you see the Star Trek franchise as a whole won a Peabody this week? No, like like no. E- eventually, like 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 the franchise won a Peabody for for its massive work over the the decades. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, there you go. Good, job. good for them. A Peabody like achievement in media for Star Trek, really great. Um, I think that's all I wanted to chat about. Was there anything else in this episode? Anything else? The Karate O O D Reno Re- Reno like super super spy super everything. Mm-hmm. No, I I, I have to uh, say that ship was really big. It was so big. It was so like big. the headquarters is big. Yeah. And that was like, like it, that reminded me of like Star Trek 2009's big spaceships, yeah. you know? Like, and I'm thinking, like, how much power does that thing use? Right. I mean, like, it, it's, 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 the, a, it's a moon, basically. It's a death star. The better, the better question is if it's that big and can do those things, how much power can it generate? And that should scare the hell out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's pretty. pretty Look, wild. I agree hopefully with we PW space... Gregory though. More, more Reno. I want more. More Reno. Reno. Hopefully, some space battles. I did really enjoy all of the ship beauty, uh, like shots this episode. I thought those have, were cool. Have we had other than the first episode? Have we had any like space battles? No, we nope. haven't really had any. We've had lots of hand to hand, but no space oh. battles. Oh, I also want to say I really like Breen transporters. Oh, the like zap ins, like, 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 like it kind of like kind of zoop, 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 zoop. It, they're it like looks, a copy machine, <laughs> uh, or it, it looks they look like basically warlocks hmm. <laughs> a bunch of, with uh, the staffs, exactly. exactly. And so, uh, and, and for all of it, it could have gone very badly, uh, but uh, I'm digging it. And I have to say, like, I was watching the episode the second time, we're like, oh, this episode is very well lit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, it, it I know was in an pre- era of dark television. Thank goodness. But, yeah, thank you, like, gaffers and DP on this shoot. Well, especially <laughs> if you, if everybody's going to be in all black, like it, mm-hmm. it's you. I want to see the the nuances, the detail of their kind of uniforms, and you need to yeah. be well lit to see that. So, and just to note, Mariah, 
only P. Lewis has, con- you know, like supported you. Yeah, That's we're gonna get to- our six drinks. Me and P. Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> we're hanging out at Reds. We're waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, I, get ready. I think the I think the cool thing is how many bars will be named Reds in the future because of Star Trek. That would be we'll fun. See. That would be fun. All right, okay, Joel, you I, let us know what you think. You you let us know if Paul needs to buy you a drink after uh, the finale airs and we find out that Nan was secretly in costume the whole time. Ha, ha, ha. You can subscribe, rate, and review on Apple as well as Spotify. Uh, give us those five stars. We appreciate it. You can find all the links to anywhere to find us at StarTrekPod.co as well as a link to our Patreon. You can follow us on Twitter and over on Instagram. Thank you all so much for joining joining us. We'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.